Are you currently in a job situation that is comfortable enough? Perhaps you are even well paid, but you do not see any future advancement opportunities. Whether it's because of an unsupportive manager or a frequent organizational change, a shrinking company, along with ongoing office politics. This leaves you feel frustrated and unfulfilled. Despite knowing that your job is not helping you to grow or using your full potential, but you cannot bring yourself to leave. In this video, I want to share five signs it's time to leave your well-paid job that does not serve your future self and discuss what you can do about it. In case you are new here, hello, my name is Tiffany. I'm the former communication vice president of the two largest companies in Sweden by market cap. In this channel, we talk about all things to help middle management get executive jobs. So if you want more content on this topic, be sure to subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when I post new videos every Thursday. Now let's get into it. Let's start by understanding why it's so difficult to leave a comfortable job. The number one reason is fear. You might fear that if you transition to another company, you will have to prove yourself all over again, especially if you don't know anyone there. Understanding new stakeholder dynamics and building network from scratch can be daunting for you. Furthermore, you may worry that new company will not offer the same level of compensation as your current company. Also, you might think you do not even know how to look for another job if you have been in the same company for 10 plus years. Your interview and job hunting skills might feel rusty after such a long tenure. And on top of all that, your confidence may have taken a hit at your current workplace, and you could be feeling emotionally drained. One of your deepest fear might even be making a change that will lead you to an even worse working environment, and you deeply doubt whether you have what it takes to achieve your career goal in a new context. The second reason is loyalty. Working in an organization for many years can create a strong sense of loyalty and belongings both to the organization itself and to the team members and colleagues. One of my clients who has been dedicated over 18 years to the same company, initially she would like to become the vice president of marketing. However, she has faced rejections for her application five times over the years. Now she even humorously referred to herself as the grandma of director. Eventually, she reached the point where she felt her chance of advancement to the executive role within the same organization was so slim despite her long-term dedication. This led her to a crucial decision point. Should I continue to wait for my turn or should I pursue an executive role somewhere else? It was a heartbreaking moment for her, even with a job offer in hand from another mid-sized company where she would become a CMO in this organization, she find herself difficult to leave the current organization. She felt guilty about leaving. She had celebrated every major milestone of her own life within the company's walls. And she has also shared in the great moments of so many colleagues' life events from wedding to childbirth. She had contributed also to the company's growth, including the creation of a new brand and grow it into a global household name. And it had become more than just a workplace. It was like a family. If you resonate with this, hit that like button. Here are a few ideas to help coach yourself through this situation. First, you want to realize a company relies on your competence and capabilities to provide value. If you are no longer aligned with the company's expectation or if the company's goals and needs have shifted in their executive profile, they may no longer require your skills and your competence at a higher level. This could lead to a misalignment. For example, if the company has changed its leadership team and the criteria for senior leadership roles, and your skill and contribution no longer matches their requirements, it might indicate that a senior executive position in this organization is no longer suitable for you. And there's the other side. You want to reverse it. It's a mutual relationship, mutual selections. You also want to evaluate whether the company is fulfilling your needs, your development, and values. To do this, ask yourself these three questions. First question, is the company offering career paths that will support my career growth? Second, does the company's purpose, mission, and culture align with my needs and value? Third, is the company recognizing my contribution through increased income, promotion, partnership, or other form of recognition that are important to me? The company and employee relationship should be built on a loyalty and a commitment from both sides. It's transactional, but it also goes beyond just achieving result and receiving a salary. The third reason you might find it's difficult to leave is because there is a meaningful vision. When you join a company, everyone works towards a shared mission or vision that the company constantly communicates and want employees to relate to, such as building a future of sustainable transportation or advancing cancer research. 
In these cases, employees often feel they are contributing to a greater good for humanity and the world. As a result, when one decides to leave such a company, it can feel like a selfish act or even like giving up on a shared vision, even if the company is no longer serving your own self-growth. This collaborative atmosphere inside of a company where everyone works together to achieve a common goal creates a strong sense of belonging. It feels like you are a critical part of a team that can overcome any challenges and achieve any ambitious goals. This feeling can be addictive, and it can make the downside of a job seem to be less painful. For example, during my time at one of the industrial leaders, it is a market leader with a dominant market share, over 50%, and the company has set even more ambitious goals. When someone leaves the company to pursue a different path, they were often met with a comment about giving up and not willing to commit to realizing the company's full potential. However, these colleagues who left knew they were actually pursuing personal growth and seeking for professional fulfillment. They were leaving a place that gave median pay in comparison to market standard. They know that they have put extraordinary effort, including working and traveling on the weekends, dealing with stressful KPIs, sales targets, and hitting profitability targets. These colleagues were simply searching for personal fulfillment and professional alignment with their values in life. Reason number four is nostalgia for what the company used to be. You have been with your company for over 10 years, even 20, having had a great career growth till this point, and you feel fully engaged in what you do. However, when change occurs, such as new leadership team, a restructured organization, or a shift in strategic directions, you might find it challenged to adapt. These changes can give you a feeling of denial, frustration, and even depression. You might even be hoping that the company will return to its old days and saying things like, our company is no longer what it used to be. I don't even recognize it anymore. I don't understand what the top leadership is taking us. Now, here's the thing. If you catch yourself struggling to accept and adapt to these changes, and you start to say things like, I really like my company and I don't want to leave, instead of, I really love my job, so I don't want to leave. This is a great indication that you are stuck in the past. Reason number five is golden handcuffs. Many employees receive a generous compensation package and having a comfortable life. Sometimes they may fear that if they leave, they will not find another place that pays as well, especially when they have equities and stocks options that mature over time. So after tolerating a stressful working environment, you may feel even more convinced that waiting for these benefits to materialize makes more sense. Now here's my question to you. What would you be missing if you are to stay in the same place for one more year? It's not just about material reward. I understand, no issue about that. It's also about your personal passion, your growth, your long-term well-being, and most important, who you are becoming in this environment. After months or even years being exposed to such condition can negatively impact your health and overall happiness. And these emotions and frustrations from work can also expand over into your personal life and affect your family. So the real question is, is it really worth it? We all have moments where we must face difficult decisions to let go of something that is no longer serving our future self. Well, decisions like career change need to be approached thoughtfully. I want to share with you a few signs that you can use to evaluate whether it's time to move on from your current job, which is no longer providing you with the meaning you need for the new version of yourself. Number one is you are no longer growing or learning. It's a sign that something needs to change. The best athletes often diversify their physical training or constantly change their routine in order to continue improve and achieve peak performance. The reason for that is at some point, everything we do repeatedly and consistently may no longer serve our growth and learning. When you notice that your current job is no longer helping you to grow, it's time to consider reinvention or making a change. Leaving a job is a big decision, so I'd always suggest you to first explore if there are ways to redesign your job, expand your scope, look for short-term assignment, or apply for different positions. If they are not available, talk with different stakeholders within your organization. This can be a way to re-energize yourself and find a renewed satisfaction in your work. And you might be surprised, sometimes all it takes is a change in your own perspective, or speaking up, ask for it and look for additional assignments or projects that can broaden your horizon. However, if you have exhausted all the possibility within your organization and can no longer advance in your own career there in this same place, neither do you feel recognized, it might be time to move on. 
How do you feel about your current job? Comment below and let me know. The second sign is you are not given the opportunity to be visible. We all know performance is only one part of the equation that leads to a long-term career success and job promotion, especially to the top. If your manager provides you with opportunities for higher visibility, for example, they assign you with high-profile projects or let you lead cross-functional assignments, others will then have the chance to see your leadership and competence. When people know what it's like to work with you and they are aware of who you are and what you can achieve, you begin to establish your personal brand, your leadership brand. As your brand grows, you become recognized as an expert or leader in meeting a certain business needs. This visibility combined with your high performance can open up new opportunities and pave the way for the next promotion for you. However, if your manager does not support your exposure and do not give you the opportunity to present your work to the senior executive, it will become extremely challenging for you to build awareness of your capability and your leadership brand. In this case, your career growth will be more difficult and it may be time to explore new pathways for career advancement. The next sign is you feel frustrated and low energy. When it's Sunday night and you are already feeling the stress and the frustration of going to work the next day, it's a clear sign. If you are typically someone who goes above and beyond and now you find yourself doing just the bare minimum and you ask yourself, What's the point of doing the extra? It's likely that you are feeling unfulfilled and frustrated. You can of course re-energize yourself by taking the initiative to volunteer for projects, shorten assignment, connecting with colleagues who can make the job more enjoyable and engaging for you. But also, sometimes you also want to give yourself a chance to contribute at a new place where you can maximize your impact. And this can be the best way to reignite your passion again. Sign number four is the environment is toxic. When you go to work, how do you feel? Do you feel good about yourself? Does your work impact your mental health or it's causing you sleepless nights or worse, you are bringing negative emotions from work or anger home to your families and friends? If you find yourself in a toxic working environment, this can manifest in many ways. For example, you might get feedbacks that does not make you feel helpful, but rather you feel it's degrading you. You also might frequently complain to your families and friends about your management team, your colleagues at work. You're quite unlikely to change your boss or fix the company culture. But before looking externally, I want you to take a moment and reflect on your own words and actions. Are you just a victim? Or also, are you a contributor to the toxic environment? For example, if you are active in gossiping, complaining, and are consistently giving negative meanings to the events and changes in your company, and you find yourself not only diminishing your own morale, but also you are stopping others, slowing down your colleagues from achieving their goals, then it's time to look inwardly at yourself. Ask yourself, how you can change your own behavior. However, if you are not doing any of those and the toxic environment seems to be deeply rooted and it's difficult to improve, it may be wise to explore opportunities outside of your current company. The next sign is your values are being violated. If you are frustrated with your job, it's likely that at least one of your value is being violated. For example, if spending time with your family is very important to you and your boss regularly ask you to travel over the weekend, it's a violation of your value. And the best way to understand if your values are being violated is to understand what you want and identify which values are negotiable to you and which are non-negotiable. For example, if spending a full weekend with your family is non-negotiable value for you, you can then communicate with your boss and express that you're willing to travel as early as possible on a Monday morning to maximize the trip while still ensure that you have a full weekend with your family. You can also make sure your manager understand that you will remain efficient during the trip and you will manage your meetings effectively to accomplish all the goals for this trip. If your manager cannot respect this boundary, then this job may no longer align with your own value. You want to always live towards something positive or even better when you are thinking leaving your current job. You should quit to secure a more positive and impactful role rather than just making an emotional decision to escape a negative situation. Perhaps you have had enough and you tried everything you can and leaving is the right choice for you, but not before you have identified something in the future that you have a good chance of loving. If you're serious about realizing your full potential and feel fulfilled in your career, submit your application to the 1% Academy program where you'll be coached by me. Go to inspiremyday.org slash apply or click the link in the description below to book a free strategy call with me. For now, I'll leave you this video to find out why overachievers often struggle to reach the top. I'll see you there.